looking downfield. He's going to heave above. At the goal line. Into the end zone. He's got it. That's a Jets touchdown. Welcome to Fireside Jets. My name is Alex with my co-host here, Ryan Moran. And today we're taking a look at projecting the New York Jets starting offense for the 2022 season. Of course, we've kind of listed off a lot of good names the last couple of days. Took a look at the OTA takeaways yesterday. Brees Hall, some really good stuff going on there. Michael Carter thinks there's enough room for them both to eat. Um, and I tend to agree. I think they can both really get involved in this offense and make um, a lot of noise, especially with Mike LaFleur uh, coming and hopefully creating a really great dynamic scheme. We've saw some really, really awesome stuff last year in terms of the versatility that they had um, and really getting creative. And they had a lot of adversity, you know, the quarterback position kind of in flux with Zach Wilson going down and White stepping in. Um, and then it, Josh Johnson, this day, it's so many guys coming in and they had to find ways to get the ball to their playmakers. Elijah Moore, uh, Corey Davis had some injury issues as well at times, but ultimately I really liked looking at the system and what they accomplished um, in year one. Now we take a step to year two, and this offense looks to be much improved. You have a couple of new pieces that we're going to discuss, Ryan. Um, I do want to dive into the offensive line first. Before we do so, how are you doing today, my friend? All is good, Alex. I appreciate it. And, you know, this offense across the board is much more exciting. I think it, it's the, the best they've had collectively in quite some time, probably dating back to about 2015 now. I mean, that's how long it's been. And, you know, it really starts, obviously, with the offensive scheme run by Michael Floor. And it's like the first time the Jets have run like a modern day offense with pre-snap motioning, you know, emphasizing the screen game, just getting ball, the football, the your skill players in space and letting them, you know, be dynamic with the ball in their hands after the catch, you know, kind of having the inside outside zone and the play action pass game off it. You know, it's a very quarterback friendly system. And there's a reason it's, you know, run by so many throughout the league and, you know, on down from there, like you said, obviously just the talent is certainly, you know, better. And it gives Zach Wilson that much more of an opportunity to flourish in, you know, a crucial second year. Absolutely. Now, when you're looking at this offense, the offensive line obviously being a major variable in their success. Zach Wilson last year had some problems just getting sacked and really uh, um, kind of adjusting to having a really tough situation on the offensive line. But how do you think Zach Wilson now takes that step forward with good offensive line play? How much better do you think he can really get? I think a lot better, honestly. I think what he showed you the last five games of the season with no turnovers and, you know, just some of the high-level, you know, moments against the Buccaneers, the Dolphins, the Jaguars, you know, there were really some very exciting things there with Zach, even the Eagles game as well. So I think, you know, with better pass blocking up front and we'll obviously start out with the offensive line here in, you know, a little bit. And I think that group as a whole, you know, allows Zach to kind of tap into a different level of the season. And, and I mean, with this offensive line now, the projected starters, I would say, personally, I have George Font at left tackle. I think you would also agree with that. Um, George Font at left tackle makes the most sense. You know, you want Zach Wilson's blind side to be well protected. Font has proven he can, he can you know, hold up in that section. So I think um, Font at left tackle is the best course of action for the Jets right now that, you know, Makai Becton's back, but he is coming off a season where he didn't play a lot. Uh, so I think you're you're safer going with the more consistent option right now. Maybe you transition those guys after a couple of weeks and see how they fare. You know, just swap left tackle to right tackle. But I think Font at left tackle makes the most sense. Um, of course, you have Lincoln Tomlinson probably going to be that left guard, right? Um, you know, that's where he played for the 49ers. So you have a good run blocking guard there next to uh, Font, and you can really open up the running game and really get some stuff going there, especially maybe in some screens to Elijah Moore and Garrett Wilson, who are really dangerous in the open field. McGovern, you know, has had his fair share of issues. He's going to be probably featuring – oh, he's definitely going to be featuring at the center spot. Um, they did not replace him. They didn't go out and sign anybody. They, there is a couple guys in the market. J.C. Treader is another one. Uh, great center from the Browns. Really good pass blocker. Maybe the Jets say, hey, you know, McGovern's not really cutting it, not looking too good this this uh, spring or this summer, and we go out and we want to get another option like J.C. Treader. Conversation, conversation for another day. Uh, but then you have Becton at right tackle. I think that's kind of uh, – and Elijah Vera Tucker at uh, right guard. So I think that's kind of how the offensive line will formulate. I think personally – that's a hell of a group. Pretty damn solid offensive line for Zach Wilson to start really generating some good progress from. Um, do you think that's kind of how it's situated? Do you think maybe there'll be a little bit of uh, slight changes there? No, I think you said it best there from left tackle to right tackle fan. You know, what you have is a pass blocker, a good athlete. I think he might just be hitting his prime. You know, he hasn't been playing football for too long. I feel like that's pretty well known. He was a college basketball player. And, 
just the way he kind of gelled with the new coaching staff last year. I, I'm going to believe he's really just getting started and, you know, probably has three, four, you know, prime years ahead of him here. When you look at the age of uh, some of the elite left tackles, right tackles going into, you know, their mid to late thirties. I think you said it best with Lake and Tomlinson at left guard in the running game, you know, pro bowl last year guy who spent the last five years in this offensive scheme. So, you know, that transition is pretty seamless, you know, after you spent five years with the same team. McGovern in a contract year, I think he's going to play well. I think he's going to deliver, you know, was much improved last year. You know, he's a tough, aggressive player, good athlete in the zone run blocking scheme. Farrah Tucker obviously makes the move to right guard, the guy who I think this is probably third position in the last three years dating back to his junior season at USC. So, you know, he's no stranger to having to change positions, I think, you know, having that experience in the scheme last year, just knowing the play calls and designs, things like that, you know, a guy who can make a difference in the running game. And, you know, I think it's just getting that muscle memory down, you know, making that move to left to right, which he should be able to, you know, obviously at a younger age, I think it's probably more of a seamless move for him to make than Lake in at 30 years old and going into year eight in the NFL. And I agree with you, back then at right tackle, it puts him and Barrett Tucker on the same side of the line where you could definitely do some things in the running game. And he obviously gained some experience there at Louisville, I think both Fent and Becton are more natural at left tackle, but I think that, you know, for just the collective unit as a whole, it probably makes more sense to have Becton on the right side. And, you know, when things become mandatory at minicamp in a couple of weeks, we'll probably start to, you know, get an initial idea. I think nothing probably is set in stone. They'll probably allow them to both get opportunities to compete. But I think, you know, if I had to guess as now, I'll say Fent at left tackle, Becton at right. Probably for the best. And like you said, Elijah Barrett Tucker and uh, Makai Becton on that right side could be absolutely lethal. You know, with those zone blocking schemes, when you're trying to open up these gaps, you have a massive human being, a guy that's reminiscent of a bison running full speed at guys. You don't want to be in his way. You do not want to be in Makai Becton's way. Elijah Barrett Tucker, extremely versatile, powerful as well. Those guys are going to be able to shift the bodies at the second level. Now you have Uzuma. Um, you have Jeremy Rucker. You have some really good tight ends in this group. We'll talk about them in a moment. Um, that can also get to that second level and, ho- and help open up those gaps. I am very excited to see the right side of that offensive line get to work. Because normally, that is going to be your strong side. That is the side you're going to be running through and really opening up gaps. That's where you want to be attacking with a running game. Even on, you know, you look at the 49ers. They love to use sweeps um, and, and a lot of unique um, running styles. I think that, you know, Robert Sala coming from that, they probably will maybe incorporate some of those concepts into it, knowing how successful they were. But it starts with the offensive line playing at a high level. And I think that right side, Makai Becton, um, may may actually make his money there because he's going to be a dominant run blocker on the right side where you need him to be. So I think Font, the better pass protector at this point, I would I would, I would assume, um, you know, better on the left side. Makai Becton going to open up running lanes with that big frame. Um, and, you know, that's where you kind of want him to be, just mowing bodies down and just move, people moving. Uh, so I think the offensive line, pretty situated. I think most people can, can agree. If you have a different idea, make sure to leave a comment in the YouTube uh, comments below. Just uh, if you think maybe Font should be at right tackle and why. I'm uh, very curious to hear your opinions, as always. Of course, Zach Wilson will be the starting quarterback. That's guaranteed. Now, the three wide receivers, um, you know, we're going to go with three receivers here. Now, they're obviously, they have a couple options on the back end. Um, you know, Braxton Barrios, you know, guys that come in situationally. But, but I think the, the main three, Elijah uh, Moore, Corey Davis, and Garrett Wilson, those are the three that we're going to be definitely harping on it in terms of the ones that are getting majority of the snaps. Um, how would you rank those guys, though, in terms of wide receiver one to wide receiver three? They're all extremely talented. I think I'd have to go Corey Davis as number one, Elijah Moore as number two, and Garrett Wilson as number three just based on experience alone at this point. What do you think? It's funny. I – I get the experience thing with Corey. I think I'd personally go Elijah Moore, number one, Garrett Wilson, number two, just based on the talent and the upside. And I would go Davis at three. I wouldn't be shocked though. Like if Corey Davis was the Jets leading receiver at the end of the season, I think he's so proven. He's a veteran. I think he and Zach have, you know, good chemistry, but you know, just the talent of Elijah Moore and kind of what he was starting to show those final five or so games before, you know, an unfortunate injury ended his season. I think, some of his production in the red zone really jumped out. You know, the the versatility that he offers. You know, DJ Reed spoke on it the other day, just the way he can kind of change up his routes and some of the unique things, you know, he can do there just with the ball and stands out to the catch. I, I think Corey could be ahead of Garrett just because, you know, picking up this system as a rookie, you know, it's very detailed. You know, Corey, like you said, is a proven veteran, offers good size, you know, compared to the other two, obviously. And, you know, I think all these moves – you know, and how it's going to help the running game. I think Corey Davis benefits off play action on the intermediate level, you know, really where he thrives. 
in breaking routes, out breaking routes, you know, crossers, things like that. And I think Corey's in a position to really thrive this year to be consistent week in and week out, you know, just the six year vet in the league. And with Garrett, I think, you know, a guy who can play inside, can play outside, can be utilized in the screen game, jet sweeps, offers contested catchability for, you know, a guy who's six feet, you know, it's pretty impressive what he can do in jump ball situations and also offers four, three speed vertically down the field. And I think he runs some of his best routes on the deep level. So the three of them complement one another. Well, obviously you said, you know, Braxton Barrios and Denzel Mims, you know, those guys situationally could have roles in the scheme. You know, Barrios is a gadget guy can play in the slot, you know, Mims with the size, the speed can help in the red zone. So overall, you know, it's, it's a group with upside, you know, it's a lot of excitement. It's better than what they've had in years past. And, you know, overall I, it could go anyway, you know, the ranking by the end of the season, the start of the season to the end of the season between more CD and Wilson. But, you know, I, I think overall it's a, it's a very good trio to feel good about. Yeah. I mean, look, if there's anything that you want to do with Elijah Moore and Garrett Wilson, I do. I get the uh, the uh, argument to make that Elijah Moore should be wide receiver one. I do think that there's a pretty strong argument to make there. I just think based on um, the experience factor, like Corey Davis. Also, I also I don't think they use Corey Davis properly at times last year. I think Elijah Moore really, when he got the ball, he did a lot of stuff after the catch that was like okay, like that's what made him great. I think Corey Davis just basically um, he's he's more proven. So I'm going with him for wide, wide receiver one now, but that could easily change. Like that could quickly shift. Um, and I'm expecting it to honestly, but like Elijah Moore, Garrett Wilson, those two guys, the, the plan is simple, get them the ball in space and let them work. That is the, that is the ultimate plan. If you're playing zone and you're playing cover three and you're dropping those defensive backs, you know, just quick slants, get them the football and let them work, you know, screen passes on the bubbles. If they're, if they're playing off man coverage or off ball coverage, just swing that ball out, let them work. Um, against man coverage, Elijah Garrett, phenomenal route runners. They're going to beat those guys. Like that is they have two guys here who can beat zone and beat man. Um, Garrett Wilson, his main con is that he lacks functional strength at the point of attack. So he might get beat up a little bit against press man coverage. Um, add a little bit more muscle mass, some more size experience. He'll be fine. I'm not worried about that really. But again, like you're talking about Garrett Wilson being your, your wide receiver three right now. So he's going up against your slot corners of the world, uh, your CB threes of the world, CB twos. Like he's going to dominate these guys. Um, so that's really what's exciting, exciting uh, about these wide receivers to me. The tight ends, however, could be a more of an interesting position battle. I think Uzoma is coming off some injury issues with the Cincinnati Bengals last year. You know, towards the end of the season, he definitely toughed it out, looked good. I think he ends up being the starter. Um, you know, you did just draft Jeremy Ruckert, who is a really good pass catcher, very underrated in that sense. Um, and I also think that he's a really underrated uh, run blocker as well. I think that he could get ends up stealing some reps at some point in the season. But Uzuma, proven, coming off a, a Super Bowl appearance, I think he is the starter. What do you think about the tight ends? Yeah, I mean, the, the group is much improved compared to what they've had, you know, recently. Um, you signed both C.J. Uzama and Tyler Conklin, Conklin to three-year contracts. You know, two guys who kind of complement one another well, which is why I liked both players being signed. You know, Uzama kind of similar in space after the catch. He uses that size and speed to break tackles. I think down the scene, he offers a little bit, you know, in terms of just vertical threat ability. Conklin, you talk about good route running, good hands. He's a sure target, you know, can be a good, reliable security blanket underneath for Zach. And Rucker in third round was really exciting to acquire. A guy who, you know, on zone splits can take backside edge defenders, you know, can be a lead blocker inside. You know, there's, there's a ton, even as a pass blocker that he can do. And I think his upside in the passing game, you, you said it, is there. I mean, he's a good athlete. He's got size. He's got speed. Show some things after the catch at Ohio State when he had opportunities. So, I think to start, you know, but LaFleur would probably like to operate out of two tight ends a lot. And he showed that the first four weeks of last season. It just wasn't working out. So they really had to go to 11 more personnel with three receivers. I think on first and second down, you could see both Uzama and Tyler Conklin. You know, I wouldn't even be surprised if they went 13 personnel and got all three of these guys on the field at times. You know, considering what they can all do in the running game, I think what that can open up potentially off play action. So, I think all three will have a role. I think, you know, with Rucker being a rookie and the learning curve for tight end, you know, at times it's taking, you know, a couple of years for young players. I think early on, you know, this season, you could probably see Conklin and Uzama really split those opportunities with the starters. Absolutely. And, and you know, I think that uh, Jeremy Rucker will end up being what Jets fans wanted Chris Herndon to be. Uh, Herndon, like, kind of had some drop issues, um, was expected to be an impact player in the receiving game. 
Jeremy Rucker doesn't drop the football, right? Like he has phenomenal hands. He's also a good red zone threat. I think he'll end up being what Herndon was supposed to be and ultimately wasn't. Um, but, you know, there's a long way to go. Got some players in front of him who are going to be getting those reps in Conklin and Uzuma. So I'm excited to see what they can accomplish on the football field for this team um, in 2022. As for the running backs, the last uh, grouping here, I think that Michael Carter retains his starting, uh, you know, starting kind of a spot for now. Uh, you know, we talked about yesterday at the OTAs, the main takeaways that Robert Sala said that these guys need to earn the reps, right? They need to earn the one, the first team reps. They're not being given out. And Michael Carter earned it last year with legitimate play. I mean, he had some injury issues at some point, but, you know, he showed it in the open field. He can break tackles. He's extremely smart. He picks the right gaps. He can make an impact in the receiving game. Like, he's got it all. Brees Hall, workhorse, Iowa State, kind of, Iowa State guy ran for like 1,400 yards last year, uh, 1,500 the year before that, like 20 touchdowns. Like, the guy's a stud. He's your workhorse running back. But if Michael Carter's kicking ass, there's no reason to make Hall your workhorse immediately. You know, ease him in. See see who wins that battle. Maybe just play a hot hand type of game. Give them both reps. Whoever's really hot, running the hot hand, whoever's playing well, just keep them keeping going. Just keep them going. Like, that's ultimately how I would approach this. They're both extremely talented. Whatever player's having a good day, just keep giving them the ball and, and keep hoping for the best. Um, I think that's kind of how you how you would go about this. But for now, I think Michael Carter is the penciled in starter uh, come week one. What do you think about the running backs? Yeah, I think between Brees Hall and Michael Carter, they're both – starting you know in week one going to get a ton of opportunities to contribute you know the contact balance that they both have with the ball in their hands you know in space to break tackles you know definitely stands out the multiplicity that they offer to keep defenses off balance because they both can you know like you said with Michael Carter they can both catch the football you know they're they're good pass blockers as well so they're relatively complete and then you know, obviously the size element, the speed element, you know, they complement one another well. You know, Brees is a little bit more of a big play threat, you know, inside the tackles, things like that. You know, Michael Carter is really good outside. You know, he's, he's a little bit smaller and naturally just plays with great leverage, which, you know, goes hand in hand with his contact balance. So, and obviously Tevin Coleman, I, I think we'll get his opportunities as well. A guy who can, you know, offer a ton of big plays with the speed, knows the system really well. He's a veteran and can help as a receiver as well. So I think overall, you know, come week one, I, I do think it will be Brees Hall actually is the starter, but like it'll be like 50, 50, 55, 45, 60, 40, something like that. You know, the share of just reps. So overall, I think, you know, the running back position, the more, the better. You want to keep both of these guys fresh. I mean, Brees Hall just turned 21 years old. So obviously youth is on his side, which is big at the running back position. Highly productive at Ohio State, I, Iowa State the last three years. As uh, you touched up on there, just some of the production in terms of rushing yards, touchdowns. So I, I think, you know, Brees and just the running back position, the way that you can kind of come in right away and contribute, I would say I would go with him. But I, I think Michael Carter will still have a very significant role in this offense. So it's it's the running back position in general. Like it's very loosely, you know, labeled as a starter, you know, with the way guys have roles and, you know, the way the team's trying to keep guys fresh. So both both will have significant roles, I think. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, but that's kind of like wraps up the projected starting offense for this Jets team. We'll dive into the defense tomorrow, which is a little bit more interesting. Uh, we, you know, most assumptions can be that these guys will be the starters on offense, but ultimately, you know, there could be some shifts and changes in terms of positioning. Um, so I'm very curious to hear what you guys think in the YouTube comments below about these specific players. Um, what you think, if there's any differing ideas that you have, very curious as always love to get your feedback below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. As always, we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Giants episode.